for sure. We're definitely going to have to revisit this. Uh, really, really interesting. I mean, obviously, you know, we played it pretty cruel there, but that's all still kind of fun. I said Frostpunk is cool. Ha! Ah! Ah! Ha! The game froze. You guys are too funny. Cruel? I mean, half the, half the mean things we did was because of you. Or maybe I'm using you as an excuse for doing the mean things I would have done anyway. I mean, I think child labor is a no-brainer. Having the, child, the children work 24 hours in the middle of the snow, maybe not so much. All right. <clears throat> so what we're going to do now is we're going to load up Mashinki. We're going to play with some choo-choo trains. Hope everyone's got their engineer hat. Um, yeah, that Moira pattern is just crazy. It's also slightly too small. This is like the cheapest engineer's cap I could find on eBay. Like ages ago. It only came in one size and it's like it's tight. And I think I'm going to have to leave it off because the Moira patterns are a little weird. Already my forehead's gotten red because of that. <laughs> yeah, we're going to leave that off. It's too trippy. But we are going to load up Mashinki here. So Mashinki, apparently, uh, some people clarified, Mashinki is like a um, Russian, like, maybe like a colloquial or a cutesy word for, like, trains. Something like that, possibly. I still think, like, from a marketing point of view, it might, I don't know if it's brilliant to call your game Mashinki just because, like, it doesn't necessarily stand out in a list. Like, if you called it, like, Mashinki, Railroad, tycoon -y kind of thing, it's like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, I got it. But it's just like, it's literally just called Mashinki, and it's like, okay. But what it is, it's like, transport tycoon, railroad tycoon, one of those kind of things. It's a check word, check, thank you very much. It means little train. Okay, so it's like, is train like, machin or something? It's like Mashinki? Is it something like that? Oh, developer commented in my video. Oh, excellent. It's Mashna? Cutesy word for cars. See, in the comments I saw someone say it's cutesy word for cars, but it's also like ends up what you use to refer to with trains and stuff like that, because there's overlap. Um, it's both Czech and Russian. In Russian, it's for cars. Mm. Train is Masina or Masinka or something like that. Okay, cool. Very cool. Well, th I, this is the first of all. This is why I've always said like the. Um, you know, Twitch chat is good because we get immediate feedback. Also, it's awesome that we've got like worldwide people in here to help to give us some more context for things. Uh, I'm just going to change the Twitch category to Mishinki um, and just quickly change the title. It's not boom. There you go. It's not a particularly creative one. If uh, if one of the mods are there and they want to go with something more creative, I'll be my guest. Okay, this is a game that is currently available in early access. I believe you can pick it up on Steam now. You can. Um, it's not the cheapest little indie game, uh, but it, I mean, it's not super expensive. It's, for me, it's uh, it's 28 Canadian pesos. I think some people were saying it's about like 19 pounds. It's probably about, I don't know, 23 bucks US or something like that. I don't know. Um, but it's looking quite good. So uh, we're going to go ahead and start. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use the same setup, I think, that I used in my Let's Try video online, uh, which is everything set to default, except we're going to use the biggest map size over here. Um, and I've disabled the tutorial. Other than that, I think we're gonna leave everything as is. So, new game it up. I don't, can you rename cities or anything like that? We maybe could name stuff after subscribers. I don't know if that's gonna be an option. <laughs> we'll see. A comfy chair, uh, I've seen you spam that multiple times and I've ignored you because it is rude to ask for another game to be played during a stream. Okay, that game, this game always does that. It like, when you go into the actual level, I think the volume levels start off at 100% and then get adjusted down to the level they're supposed to, so there's that weird, like, static and, and whatever going on here. So, if you didn't see the video, Mishinki is is a train game over an area. Now, when you are in the, the, the full view, and it's the big map, and you're zoomed out, I find it a little frame ratey laggy, whatever, when you're fully zoomed out over here. Uh, but, uh, but again, it's still early on, and I, don't, I did not find that same performance issue on the smaller maps, or, in fact, when I'm zoomed in, it seems to be... You know, seems to be mostly okay. Maybe, maybe I'm misinterpreting. Maybe it's just the scroll speed is slower than I expect. Maybe the frame rates are actually fine, and it just scrolls a little slower than I imagine. And I'm interpreting that as a slowness. I don't know. Um, so in here, we're going to start in the early Steam Age. And the early Steam Age, there are only four things. Passengers, logs, wooden planks, and coal. I should have said it this way. There are four things to transport around. As you go forward in the ages, there's going to be more and more resources, more and more things to ship around. One of the interesting things about Mashinki is that it uses a slightly... I should pause the game. 
it was a slightly interesting economic model where instead of just having like you get money for all the things and you spend money for all the things instead it uses like sort of these token currencies um which i think is kind of neat um for example, most things you can spend with, with the money tokens, which you can see down here. We have 1,479 money tokens in the bottom left corner of the screen. Um, and most things are bought with those, but not everything. And you get things like for completing log, er, for de delivering wooden planks, rather, to tool works, we get plank tokens. And for delivering coal to the tool works, we get coal tokens. And certain things can be purchased with these different tokens. For example, um, early on, we'll have the option of buying a train either with money or with these plank tokens. Um, upgrades, different building upgrades for your um, your industries or your stations are bought with different things. So you're having to like be a little bit more creative with your economy and balance things differently, which I think I quite enjoy. It's also interesting because it was entirely realistic for these railroad tycoons to have their own industry and like, you know, we're going to have to build a steel mill so that we can use steel to you know, build our track or, or something of that nature, right? So I like that. <laughs> All right. So what we're going to do here is we're going to start off with passenger service because that actually gives us money tokens, which is very important early on. Uh, and unlike what I did in my little video, we're going we're gonna to do at least a few things of passenger stuff. And if we can do it in an area which has got a good mix of different uh, resources and our entire workflow, we'll get that in um, place. One of the things will be the lumber mill to make sure we can get logs somewhere conveniently. This wouldn't be too bad. I saw Lola say something about the top right. Uh, we want a few decent towns to get started. Lancaster, Wigan, Kilmarnock, Milton Keys. Hamilton. I mean, so the different cities have different sizes. You can see the number of uh, passengers they produce per or whatever over there um, but yeah I'm also interested in the economic stuff like we can get um, f wood to this sawmill then get the planks and the coal and bring them to this tool shop near Southampton for example that might be a possibility I don't think it really matters too terribly much where we start we should have a little bit of everything there's always something to be said about the center because then you can always branch out in all kinds of different directions and actually I kind of like this spot look we've got tons of logs that can be brought to the sawmill then we've got the tool works over there. We've got coal near the tool works, and we've got a good number of cities. Are they decently sized cities? Gloucester? I Actually, I don't know how the Brits pronounce this. I think they pronounce it Gloucester, as opposed to like Gloucester or whatever. The problem is there are, there are Gloucesters and Gloucesters and things like that in North America as well, um, including one right outside of Ottawa, and everyone likes to pronounce them in a different way, which is super annoying. It's like... It's like that other name, like, do you pronounce it Warwick or Warwick? It's like such a big pain in the ass. Captain Penguin says it's Gloucester. So what, you don't pronounce the L or is that a typo? Gloucester? Whatever, I'm going to say Gloucester because F it. So Gloucester's pretty big at 40. We've got Wrexham over here. Sounds like the punchline of a joke. Wrexham? Damn near kill them! <laughs> um, oh, Huddersfield over here big city stoke another big one so um yeah i like that idea in fact i think what i might do is start off with passenger service from gloucester to huddersfield they might produce enough that we'll like fully saturate a train by itself then we can consider bringing in stoke or different things like that <laughs> but um tsh, you like my wrexham joke <laughs> um in massachusetts our gloucester is pronounced gloucester gloucester yeah it rhymes with cluster gloucester which actually is probably not too diff different than some of the English accents either. That's the other problem, right? It's like, how do you pronounce this English city name? Well, who are you asking? Someone from south of England? Someone from London? Someone from Yorkshire? I mean, like, flip a coin, how are they going to freaking pronounce these words? But I like that. So let's start and get some stations near these guys. Now, one of the questions will be where exactly to position the station and how much do we want to be concerned about future proofing? That's something I don't know in terms of spacing things out. So by the way, when you enter construction mode, the world enters this look. I, I, I don't know. You guys will have to let me know if there's another game that does this, but I think that's brilliant. This is the classic way, and, and this should like, oh my God, this looks so much like Transport Tycoon or... Um, Railroad Tycoon 2, I think, also had this sort of isometric -y kind of feel to it. So you can clearly see how you're building, and then you go here, and it's like you get the kind of realistic world. And you can play the game fully in both ways. Well, you can't build in the realistic mode, but there you go. Um, 
So yeah, where are we gonna place the first station and so on and so forth? I feel like we're gonna put it right over here. Because the catchment area is very tiny on these stations. Turn the game into a Chris Sawyer world, yeah. So what we think we can do is we can um, we can smooth things out, level things out over here. The grass will grow back in, by the way. But you know we can we can do this in preparation for you know our trains and whatnot. Platforms increase catchment area as well. That is really helpful to know. I did see that comment a little earlier as well. Um, so uh, let's build our first station. So. Let's build the station maybe as close to the city as we can. So if we do this, I think I think we'll be able to leave out of here from that end. I'm not actually 100% sure. Maybe I should build a little test rail to make sure first. Because I want to probably come like that and then... Yeah, okay, that'll, that'll work out. Good. So if we do this, we can fit a station. Sorry, not a depot, a station. Like this. And we can plan on adding extra platforms that way to increase the catchment area. Um, one thing that you guys might know, is there a way to see the catchment area when you're in this mode? Because you can see it when you're building the freaking stations. And it goes out about two tiles. You can see the blue there, and it doesn't quite reach everything. So if we were to go, and I don't know, like I'm doing a test here. We could always like redo this. If I were to go and build this platform... Okay, it doesn't extend the catchment area exactly. It just, it's, the catchment area is within two tiles of any one of these. Um, whereas if we add a waiting room, say here, you can see that it dramatically increases the size. So I'm going to go ahead and assume we're going to want a ra waiting room over here. Take some money. But now we've got a lot of Huddersfield within the range of our station. And the way it works is each house generates passengers. So they'll go and pop into the station. That should be okay. So I think we're going to be all right. There we go. We got passengers. We're now our station is producing 19 passengers per tick and accepts up to 19 passengers. Presumably that's going to be lots. We'll see. So Gloucester, we're going to do the similar kind of thing. Um, I think what we're going to do is build a station and just I'm just wondering about hugging the street, or maybe just like over here. And then we can put a little um, waiting area right over here to reach further into the city. Seems fair to me. No space for a signal at the station with Ben like that. Um, that's true. We can we can resort that later, but we'll see. So um, if I check this, yeah, this only this doesn't produce as many um, passengers. But again, we can waiting room this up. Whether or not it makes sense to improve it now, I think it does. Let's do that. So now we've got a lot more stuff going on. So let's build a rail between the two. Now, I could build it directly, and I think that's okay. It's mostly a straight line, which means it'll be easy for us to build sidings or dual rail it up or do all kinds of things later on. So we're gonna do this, we're gonna get it started so we can make some money. And then we can go and, and uh, I don't think it connected to the station. Oh. You might be right here. There you go. Now you're connected. I'll leave this extra bit of rail here because it doesn't hurt anything. Maybe we'll want it for something later on. This can go straight up into the next platform, for example. And if we need signals, we can put them over here. It's a little further. We'd like it as close to the station as possible. But that's going to be fine. So now we're, we're connected up. Okay. So now we need a, a depot from which the trains will um, will spawn. Um, doesn't really matter where it is. I think what I'd like to do is put it right over here. Because if we're going to extend the station near Gloucester, it's going to extend out like downwards from this point of view. So if we put a depot over here, it's very unlikely to get in our way. And we can always move it or delete it later on, build a depot somewhere else. Depots is where we build our trains. So we're going to purchase our first engine. You can see we can either buy a porter for $40 tokens, or we can buy a Baldwin, which is faster and more powerful, but requires lumber tokens to do that. So we're going to be required to build a porter. 
And then we can add wagons to this. We can filter based on what good we'd like to transport. Here we're interested in, in passengers. We've got two options, the Pullman or the coach car. The coach car can grab more people. It Visually, it looks like it's different length. I don't know if that's true on the map. Um, maybe what we'll do is we'll... Um, We'll put two coach cars instead of one uh, instead of one Pullman. Or, sorry, two coach cars instead of four Pullmans. I haven't actually tried this yet. So we're going to do that. Can you name trains is an excellent question. Uh, and it looks like currently the answer is no. I can't click on this train name. So it'd be nice to do it probably later on because it seems like an important thing. But currently we cannot. So, um, what we're going to do here is you can set up orders for a specific route, but if you just hit start, the trains are actually interesting because what they will do is they will automatically go to the closest station that has a good they can pick up. And then once they've got goods, they will then go to the closest station where they can drop it off. So they'll automatically run the Gloucester to Huddersfield route, but we could make it explicit as well. Say, listen, you're going station two to station oops to station one which is already what he was doing so that's okay can we name stations i like clearly it's something we're gonna have to be able to do but i don't believe we can at this time if there's a button we'll see try to bring mail uh n there's no mail that gets produced over here later on i think that'll be steam age two um, what will happen is we will get um, mail depots and things like that. Auto routing AI is kind of dumb though. They will always turn around in the station even if the traffic lights are one way. I don't think these Pullmans, I think they're still just one tile trains, which is interesting, or cars I should say. We've got the option for auto turnaround here. Um, when we start up the game, so trains can turn around in stations, but you could turn that off and then you'd be forced to do the entire turnaround. Yeah, that my, my potion of invisibility. <clears throat> as far as I know, passengers do not try uh, choose specific stations to drop off to. So that's something that is different from um, other rail games. Maybe it's something that'll come later, maybe it won't be. Again, with any game, no matter what, even with, you know, tycoony type things like this, there's always, um, abstractions that happen. Like these tokens, for example. Here we just made a bunch of money because we delivered people to these houses. And I don't know if you've, you've seen, but you'll see people fly from the houses to the stations. Boom! I love that. Boom! And that's an excellent visual. We could go back to our realistic mode over here, which looks great. We can, uh... It's very loud. Very loud. But we're on the choo-choo train. Choo-choo! Later on, in one of the later alpha builds, there will be the uh, option... Oof. There will be the option of um, manually driving a train from that view. Oh, oh, right, I forgot the important button. The most important button. Hold on. Yeah, so now we're like a passenger. Look at us. And we got the choo-choo button. But I mean, these stations look gorgeous. I mean, the game looks absolutely beautiful from this point of view, like just gorgeous. And then you like go into construction mode and it's like, oh, but this mode is actually useful. Whoa! Instant buy. I don't think the train hat, the problem is the train hat does like weird moiré patterns and and things. It's very, it's very odd. So there we go. Okay, so we have money coming in, which is great. Uh, we might want to go and connect one more town over here. We might want to connect Stoke. Um, and I think what I'll do is I'll take the really lazy approach. Because laziness is good. Um, and we're just going to connect it to the other side of the station from Huddersfield. And actually, um, I no, I think we actually would need a separate train. Because I think the needs are going to be really high. I don't know, maybe we can just use the same train. We'll see how it goes. So if I were to build a station... I don't know where we want it for this one. I feel like over here... 
so that we can maybe keep going this way. And yeah, I'm just going to go and connect from here to there. I don't know if that's actually the curve I would have wanted to do it on, but let's pretend. Um, and I think, again, it'll be a decent idea, yeah, because this is like no passengers right now. But if we go and build a waiting room way over here, then it's got access to plenty of passengers, which is great. And yeah, we'll just tell our train here. Train number one. Oh, you're already there. Um, after you go to station one, which is here, you're going to go to station three. Then you'll go back to station one. There we go. Back and forth, back and forth. And that's going to be okay. Um, we actually have an overkill of passengers in a lot of these stations. So we might want to add more cars to this train. We could consider, you know, just more trains. But let's leave that for now. So we've got a steady source of actual income at this point, which is great. So let's work on our other tokens over here. So the way we get the other tokens is by delivering logs and coal to the tool works. Three logs equals one log to or sorry, three lumber equals one lumber token, four coal equals one coal token. And to get lumber, we've got to bring um, logs to a sawmill. So let's do that. Oh, we collected, we did 50 passengers. We get a hundred dollar reward for that as well. Loverly. So, Let's go and build a simple little station near this forest. There you go, which will reach it. And then we'll build one near this sawmill. May as well build it to maximum size, because who cares, right? I don't really care about grabbing Coventry, although I... Uh, there's no undo. I suppose I could have built a station that would have also accepted passengers in Coventry. Coventry? Whatever. You guys deal with it. But I don't know. And we'll build a station over here. Um, let's let's wait. Let's let's do the first bit. So yeah, the, the lineup's a little bit odd here because you'll have to loop around, but you'll get there. Boom. So I'm just gonna do very direct routes right now. We'll have to figure out like a more complex routing solution and you know dual lanes and crap later. But right now we wouldn't have the money. We'd go bankrupt. Ah! This is what I need an undo button for. Although I think. As long as we, if we use this deconstruct tool, we get some or all of our money back. So it's not quite as dire as it looks, luckily. There we go. So that's all set up. Boom, boom, boom. We'll get the coal after. Um, how much is a depot? 64. Yeah, it'd be nice to not have to build another one. What I'm gonna do is this. I'm gonna plan a little bit for the future. Not much, but wow, that's super expensive. I do wanna flatten this out though. Um, one more. Cause there's gonna be there's gonna be something with the other end of the station in Gloucester here. I don't know what. And then probably like we can we can get some sort of spur off going this way. Well, I don't know. I don't know what the, the full-time solution will be. But let's get a train that is going to be set up to grab logs from uh, the forest and drop them off at the lumber mill. So, train here. Uh, we need another porter. And your job is going to be to pick up logs. We're going to go with one, two, three, four. That's going to be fine. Um, and your orders are going to be this. You're actually, we're going to make sure you get a full load here. You're going to wait for a full load. Right after a station. Hold on. Okay, so remove that. So we tell you to go to the station, then wait for a full load. Then you're going to go to the sawmill and wait for a, an empty load. There we go. That's what you want. That's what we want you to do. So you're just going to be doing this. Now, if I tell you to start, you won't move. And the reason for that is that this whole rail section here is one block, which means we can't have two trains going that way. This train is occupying it fully. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this train do the drop off and come back and I will put it, do I even bother putting a signal here or do I just tell you to ignore the next signal? You know what, let's do that. Let's just be lazy for now because I don't know what our full signal layout's gonna be. So I'm gonna tell you to ignore the next stop signal and you will make your way over there. Although we will still need some sort of signal on the other side here because stations don't break up blocks. So I think this train would therefore never move again. 
Okay, so at least for now, we're going to have to put some sort of signal over here. I'm going to give us a gap for the future, but that will separate these two train lines so they don't interact with one another. But we have a little signal here. Um, it's weird you can't actually see the, like, the directional arrows. No, there it is. Weird Z fighting error from certain angles. That's interesting. Oh, we now have a mission for delivery of logs. Excellent. Deliver 100 logs while we're working on it. We just got our first load of 28 over here. Now, we get no income whatsoever from dropping off logs. Zero. Nada. The sawmill only produces lumber from logs. Do the other way around or you can't get past. Well, right now we're okay. This is just to break up the two lines so that these... The, my passenger train over here and my logging train, that way they have no impact on one another. Yeah, we keep getting weird sound ticks. There's, there's something odd in the game, but it's quite early. Oh, it's because the train there was there was trees there. The trees and the arrows were fighting. Okay, so what we're gonna need is we're gonna need another train over here. Now the train is gonna pick up logs from here and drop them off at the tool works. Easy peasy. The problem is, well, there's a couple of problems. First of all, how's the train gonna get here? Because for a train to get there, he's gonna have to pass through this other train. So that's one problem. Maybe we we'll put in a siding or something like that. That might not be a terrible idea. That will avoid certain issues. Um, that siding won't get used for very much later on, but it's okay. The other thing I could do is just put down a depot over here and spawn a train over here. And honestly, I think that's what we're going to do. So, yeah, I know there's a lot of freaking, freaking people waiting there. We're going to, we're definitely going to level up that train in a second. I think I'm going to continue just the quick and easy option right now. We're going to go ahead and build ourselves. Can we get this like operate in two directions? There we go. Build ourselves a depot right over here. Costs a little bit of extra money, but that's okay. So we're gonna have a new engine, and this one is gonna be responsible for grabbing uh, lumber, uh, and it's gonna do. We could probably just leave it on automatic, but uh, I will explicitly tell it once more. You're gonna be going to this station, and then dropping them off over here. Done and done. We've got a reward because we delivered 100 logs. Excellent. Now we have to deliver timber. Hey, we're working on it. Perfect. But this train can't move because, again, this entire rail section is one giant block. So what we need to do is we need to set up a little signal here and here. That way, all these rails are divided into blocks and will only allow one train in the actual station right now. So this guy's going to drop off its logs. And it looks like these cars are about two-thirds maybe of a tile length so you can actually have a train with a lot of these um these types of cars on it anyway uh train three i actually never hit play for there we go start he wouldn't have moved anyway but and this warning doesn't clear itself automatically train two is clearly not stuck anymore but we should be set up that now these trains will take turns being in the station and they will wait at the signal if there's another train waiting there So this guy's going to wait until the station's completely clear, and then he's going to go in. Very simple little setup, but it'll be okay. Make train two the lumber tools train, then make a new one. Oh, I guess, yeah. I think that was in response to certain starting things out earlier. But now we're getting lumber tokens. At the tool work, for every three pieces of timber, or lumber delivered, we get a lumber token. So we have a new currency available now. Lovely. Let's get the coal going as well so we can start getting coal tokens. Station. May as well make them as long as possible. It takes a little it's a little bit more expensive, but that way we can handle longer trains. Get you connected there. We will have to do the um, little signal thing over here so that this station is reserved. This is very simple signal sting. We still don't have anything that will allow trains to pass each other, but it'll be okay. And now at this depot, this depot, we almost have enough for a Baldwin. This guy's a total Baldwin. Clueless? Anyone? Clueless? Um, we will go ahead and do maybe a four-car Talbot, because why not? Your route's going to be from here to here, and you go ahead and start. 
This train's currently stuck, but it won't be as soon as this guy leaves this block, this train can start moving again. And then because of the signal, uh... Why are you going the wrong way? I've noticed this happens sometimes with these trains. Just go to depot. I know, we're not waiting for full. Should definitely do that. Uh, can I reorder this? Oh, yeah, there we go. Hold on, what train am I fucking with right now? Train number four. Did I click on the wrong stations? Wait, hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Why are you going five and six? It's definitely train four. Which is the train that's sitting over here. You're supposed to go station seven, then station six. That's why I kept going in the other direction. There you go. I think it copied train. I actually don't even know how to copy a train. You're right, it must have copied this another train, but. There must be a button for it, but I don't know what it is. We got a quest for deforestation. There's a forest near Sheffield, which is being deforested. We if we can ship a thousand logs out of here within ten years, we'll get a reward. It actually is producing a ton of wood for and coal. Um, we need a lumber mill to dump the Sheffield food or er, uh, logs to. And the closest lumber mill is way over there. Doesn't seem like a very convenient quest to me, but maybe we can pull it off. If you click the plus sign and then click another train, it auto copies the orders. Okay, that's actually really handy to know. Um, although apparently it's also really easy to misclick for it. Let's go ahead and just create a little solo route over here to do this with. And as far as I can tell, the closest lumber mill is the one that's up there. But alright. It's gonna be expensive, but fine. Depot on here. It's gonna be its own, its own little route. Engine. Uh, you know what? We can use the Baldwin, and we may as well, because it's faster and more powerful. It does it has a higher operating cost? But that's okay. Your job is just gonna be lumbering. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm just gonna hit you to start. I'm not even gonna give you orders because you will just do the right thing because there's nothing else on this particular um, thing. Oh, I should have said wait for full. Oh, which it won't do if without orders, so hold on. So go there, then wait for full. I mean, ultimately, that'll probably happen anyway. And then go here. There we go. Or station. There's our logging thing, which will happen pretty quickly. We could upgrade this to, like, produce even more wood than before. There we 
There you go. It's got a full load now, so it's going to start moving. I'm willing to bet it's going to have a full load waiting for it every time it comes back, so I don't think we have to upgrade or anything. Do the industries in towns grow like transport fever? Well, so I don't know for sure. They, I strongly suspect so. And the reason is... Where the hell's our setup? Apparently I rotated the map at some point. I also don't know if there's a way to get a list of all your things. Train list. Show me this train. There you go. Okay. I'm getting very confused about where we are. Because you can rotate the map. Um, I suspect there is, and the reason for that is if you click on one of these buildings here, see how Gloucester, I believe for every time you reach this certain milestone for passenger delivery, I think it builds a new, a new building. So I think the towns do grow based on that. Oh, you got a quick access to all your stuff here too. Thank you. That's actually really handy. Okay. We've got achievements as well that you can get. Crash 100 trains! <laughs> uh, I suspect that will be a thing. Oh, there's news articles too. Nothing in there right now. And yeah, we would get a boost if we got up to six trains over here. Don't forget to upgrade train one. Oh, with more cars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's do that. So train one. Can I? There it is. One of these buttons do. There's not a lot of tooltips in the game as is. Start and stop. I don't know. Uh, train one, I would like you to go to the depot. Go up to the depot, please. Oops. I just forget one is pause. Okay, so now that you're in there, click the depot. Wagons, passengers. We're gonna add a couple more coach cars to you, and then tell you to start. There you go. You can hold 72 passengers now, which is good, yeah, because we've got a huge number of passengers chilling. Just abducted 36, 36 people. We just did park for a second. Actually, don't know where in your. Okay, you're gonna go here. Excellent. So we'll be making even more money, even more faster. More faster, more money. So we don't actually have to ship the tools anywhere. If some, I'm sure some people are concerned about that. Oh, we've delivered our little timber. We get a nice reward there. Excellent. Deliver a coal. We're working on it. Here's a coal delivery coming in here. Lovely. Gives us more coal tokens. Oh, and there's tons of coal, actually happening super fast we might want to do something like put a freight station here so that we can load more stuff more faster or we start doing it with double trains let's run a second train on here actually so what we're going to do is we're going to extend our station to have another platform what Oh, am I misinterpreting what this does? I could just add more cars for now. You're right, but I want to... Do we just, like, extend the station? Do I just, like... Rotate it? We can try that. Hold on. I'm going to go to the platform. No, no, that doesn't do anything. I'm trying to click and drag and stuff. Uh, yes, we will be upgrading the tool marker. That's great. So it looks like this might just, like, add more standing room and also extend our range a little bit. Yeah, build a new station attached is what I'm going to be trying now, and I'm wondering that this is going to be in the way. But if I were to just build another station like this... Yeah, it looks like it does just extend it. Okay. Then what we want to do is do that. Clearly, we're going to need a... Well, there's a few different things. I guess we need st signals here and here. There we go. Like that. To not allow people to go into the wrong one. And then if we're going to have more than one train, we're going to need at least a siding. If we don't want to, like, dual lane it. So that the trains can pass each other, right? 
So we're going to do that. Now, I'm going to add more signals for these sightings. Now, this will work as is, but this will be probably just a little bit more sensible if the sightings had a direction. So we're going to choose right-hand rule for our trains. So, presumably we know how to copy a train now. Let me pause the game because it'll make my life a heck of a lot easier for clicking and things. Um, oh, I don't want to place track. Thank you. I'm going to create a new engine. We're going to create a new Baldwin with some cars. All right, we'll use the bigger lints as much as we can. There we go. We're, we're out. And then if I were to go and go to orders, click the plus, and then click a train, it copies it. Good tips. The second station may not reach as far as the other station does. Um, well, the thing is, that it only says I have one station. So presumably, they share their space and upgrades and things like that. All right, let's see what this does. This train's not going to move right now. Okay, there we go. Only one train can be in a station at a time. Oh. Um, I was going to say, this is actually going to lead to a slight scrub. You. Go to the depot. Because we don't have a, a signal here. And it looks like I can't... I can pull it one here. Which I guess will be okay. There we go. That should avoid that problem in the future. It's a very tiny little thing. Just a slight hiccup based on the fact that I spawn the tray in here. So one of them will go there. So if I start you again, you will wait at here and not enter this block. There we go. Then we'll be okay. Should have let them hit start working on the achievement. We got a subsidy for delivering... Oh, for having six trains. Excellent. Oh, track construction goal. So you're going to go here. You're going to wait. There you go. Now you should be okay. So what will happen here is... You're going to go here. You're going to wait for that to be clear. We probably want to end up with some slightly different kind of structure. Or we actually might want to arrange the siding to go into this area directly. Because I can sort of see situations where we might get multi-trains jammed over here. Mm -hmm. No, I don't think so, actually. I think we're okay. Um... We need to get rid of this signal here. Oh my god! We got a train crash! You turned around too quickly! <laughs> It'll be fine now. Now that we've got this, it's okay. But that other train had started too soon. Hooray! We got our first crash! Okay, let's try that again. Baldwin. Um, six Talbots. Just go. You'll do the right thing. You won't wait for a full load, but it's going to be okay. Second one. Uh, oh, you're supposed to be a bald one, but I guess it's going to be okay. You're going to be a porter. Six Talbots. And go. Okay, they shouldn't crash anymore now that I've got the right things put down. Because they should be waiting over here. And they only crashed because I got rid of the signal. So train started moving. So here, that train will wait. This one will go into the siding. And this one will come in. We're going to be fine. And this guy's going to wait until that station is cleared. Of course, if we just double track the whole way and use, you know, appropriate anchor changes, then there would be a lot less waiting. Or people would wait a lot closer to the destination. Um, we might actually, since we now have three trains coming in and out of this, we may want to double platform this, for example. Which probably will mean bulldoze in this because it's held in the way. Oh, we got a quest to add uh, three station extensions. So what a lovely time. Well... Or a three station extension, so it might not give us credit for extending the tool works. But we can spend the tool works here, so instead, right now we're getting one lumber token for every three lumber. If we get a furniture workshop, we get four tokens for every five lumber, a much better ratio. So we're going to go ahead and add a furniture workshop right behind here, for example. Um, I wonder if it like prefers one over the other. I wonder if it tries this one like more greedily first. And then if it only has three left over, it'll just give me the extra one. Okay, it is taking it in chunks of five. We've got some lost trains. We'll, we'll take a look at that in a second. Let's see if that's still true. And it did... It did give me progress over here, which is good. Yeah, I don't think these trains are actually lost. No, it's popping it up every now and again. We may have to give them an actual order, because it's possible that we're going to... Because they're, they're just on auto 
behavior right now. I didn't actually give them an explicit uh, route. Also, it looks like we are grabbing coal faster than we're producing coal now. So we do want to give them an explicit order. Because we want them to wait. Fair enough. So your orders are very explicitly, go here, wait for a full load, go here. And your orders are going to be to copy this train's orders. There we go. And we should no longer get complaints about trains being lost. Um, Joko, there's, a, there's an option. When you create a new game, you can make it so that trains can't reverse at all. I should have told this train, like, to go to the stations in a slightly different order. Because it's doing its order, which is the first one is to go here and pick things up. That's why it didn't turn around there. Waiting for the full load, which is fine. And yeah, so there's a little bit more waiting here than we would like. So let's go and improve this. First of all, I don't want to deconstruct this because it's going to screw everything up. Then we're going to add a new actual platform here, i.e. second station. Get rid of that signal. And add that. So I'm curious. Yeah, they are smart enough to use the other platforms, so that should get rid of a lot of the waiting over here now. Should be much better. Can we go and get the... Uh, so we don't have steel yet, so we don't have to upgrade this. The heating plant will give us a lot more coal tokens. Let's get you down. You bring me down. So, I don't care about the farm tools. I don't care about that. Uh, it looks like we actually could use more coal because our trains are waiting here. So, ooh, timber. So, we could bring timber to here and get more coal. That's interesting. If we just go with a coal storage, that I production speed increase 50%. Increase coal production 20%. Okay, so let's do coal storage. There we go. That gives us our reward. Tell you what, we'll put down a maintenance shed as well. There we go. And we got a reward for the station extensions, although we weren't actually extending the station, so that's okay. How's your deforestation coming along? Uh, it's coming well. 378 has been done. Um, you've got tons of wood and coal waiting over here. We could increase the rate by building more, more trains and stuff, but I don't know. I think we're pretty all right. We were just over here, right, for the other stuff? No, yes, no. Oh my god, I'm never going to be able to find my shit. There it is. So, if we want, we can go ahead and extend ourselves to the next age at this point. Because we have certainly enough resources banked up. Actually, we don't have enough coal yet. But our coal tokens will be coming faster now. Um, we could go to the next age, which would unlock more resources. I think that's the way to go. So Station 7 near Blackpool. There you go. It's generating coal like crazy, so these trains aren't really going to have to wait anymore. In fact, we might want to go and upgrade the station to have the faster loading time. Or this one here, because it's... Well, it's not really bottlenecky. I mean, it sees a lot of trains, but that's about it. I think we'll go to the next stage and try to get steel going. Curious to see how that feels. This feels good, having the trains that properly work. Now that I know how that platform stuff works, we could... Well, if it weren't for the fact that we have, like, an overkill of passengers already, we could extend the platforms to reach more of these things. But clearly, we don't need to worry about that. If we need to do anything, and our money is coming in well enough, is we could double up. Again, you know, game balance might change and stuff. Right now, we feel rich, but maybe because you don't need that much stuff in the first era. Let's go ahead and go to the next era. So, we're going to invest... Oh, it's timber! It's not, um... 
it's not uh, money. It's timber and coal. Now, the era will advance on its own once we hit 1930. But if we invest, it'll happen faster. And if we do any investment, we get uh, some bonus reward. How are you doing on timber over here? You don't have enough. We probably want to do some upgrades here. Some better ratios. One-time gift shop. All right. How are we doing on actual lumber here? Uh, we don't have infinite lumber here either. Okay, let's extend this part first. Not the station. The forest. Tree nursery. Lumberjack storage. There we go. That'll probably outstrip what, what one train can pick up. And that'll be okay. So this changes production. This might just be the rate of converting, because you can see the logs going down and turn into planks. This might just be affecting the rate of conversion. Oh, you aren't working for a full load, although... Oh, it also changes it one to one. Oh, I don't actually have the, uh, the planks here. We will in a second. But this is a one to one ratio. Instead of a three to two. It looks, I can see the yellow. So both things try to operate at the same time. This looks like this one operates slower, but has a better conversion rate. That's what's going on. Not super intuitive, but at the same time, it's a pretty reasonable way to do it. You can actually see it due to 3 to 2. Um, we are... Okay, the deforestation is a good, a good idea, right? Like, right now, we're, we've got crazy amount of logs over here. What I should do is be hauling them to a tool shop over here to make more lumber, because we've got a lot of it. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll do this. We'll put some signals here and here. And... Tool works over here. That's a long, long route, but it's going to be okay. And again, I'm going to go ahead and take sort of a lazier approach and just get you in here. And we're going to take the Baldwin and the logging car. We'll go to six. I'll give you an explicit route here. Wait for full load. here and go. Um, no, don't wait for a full load. Just because there's a chance that this one might fill up, like might not have enough stuff, and it'll just sit here and we'll never get a log delivery, since we only have one platform. Between Transport Fever and Machinki, which is better? Well, they do, di they do very different things. Very different things. I think this appeals to me a lot more than Transport Fever, but I don't know. And that's right, we do get coal out of this, and there's an actual coal mine over here, too. So we could route the coal here. Hell, we could just go and connect this bit up together. And get the coal directly there. Get a lot more resources. I mean, we're not doing too badly right now. Hell, but they still have a goal to build tracks, so let's just go ahead and, like, go crazy. Um, yeah, you ride around this way. And do that. And then we need to make sure... We need to make sure to do what here to prevent problems? I mean, double track it would be good. Um, right now, just some sidings would be okay to break this up. Let me just go ahead and Oops. 
We don't need all these, but let's get a little something something. And then one down here. I did not pull from the right area. There we go. Yeah, the weird uh, audio glitches and weird lag. There's there's something in the innate game engine that's a little bit wonky, but that's all right. It'd be nice if you could just put the uh, signal on the, the correct side of the track on the first click, instead of always having to double click. You put it down and you click on like one of the sides to set the the angle. Anywho, uh, drop out of that, go there, take you, do this. Ah, we've got an even more powerful set of engines here. Um, because we entered the steam age, I don't think I did the upgrade, but that's okay. Uh, you're gonna do this. You are picking up coal from over here. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's five. Your orders will be to go to here. Um, here. Mostly seems to happen when I log out, and I think it's lag related. And go here. I'm not going to tell you to wait for full because of a variety of different reasons. Because the coal produces a lot slower. Uh, we might want to go and actually get a charcoal kin kiln here to have it happen faster going forward. Just to make sure that the coal holds up with the uh, login. But that's going to be alright. We have an option here. Big problem. A company has invested considerable funds logging. Technology company is barely delivering half. Can you increase demand? Half capacity. Full capacity. Whatever. What's the goal? Deliver. Whoa. Okay. Deliver 400 logs to any sawmill in one year. It's not any one sawmill. You know, we can probably do that. You can repeat this task until you recreate... Right. So, it does, we don't have a time limit. It just has to happen within one year. We've got a mission to own a fancy locomotive. We've completed our track, so we get some of the coal. We've got an opportunity here. Deliver iron ore and coal to any foundry. Well, we'll certainly work on that. And to advance uh, into the next era, which is the early diesel age... Uh, we've got 10 years, um, but we can also invest to speed that up, so we'll see. You can also see that post offices have started to appear now. So we'll be looking into that going forward. Lag is because it started a new age and had to spawn new things in the map. Yeah, but it seems to be happening even when we're playing normally too, so I don't know. So we'll just run it at speed 1 for a bit. Take it easy. <laughs> when you're adding a signal on the far end of the passing loop, doesn't make it possible for a train to block the route at the intersection. Train block here? Mm, no. What could happen is you're right in that we could have a train in this block and another train coming up behind and want to enter this block. And then a train could stand here, and that could lead to some weirdness. And what we probably want to do is, you know, well, ultimately we want to double lane it. This only works well when there are not too many trains trying to use this action. I, I suspect we could probably have like four or five trains in this route and not cause real issues. Oh, we actually got an iron ore mine on something not too far from what we already got. So we got iron ore spawned in a few areas and we got foundries like this one over here, foundry near Swindon. So we've got, um, we need to bring both coal and iron ore and that will produce steel plus a coal token and then we can deliver the steel i think to a tool factory yep deliver steel here to get steel tokens and we can also level some things up might not be too shabby i should do more industry giant 2 industry giant 2 is still one of my favorite games good music excellent gameplay mechanics really into it 
Do 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 do. Build this here. Put a signal there. This is just so that this one train doesn't leave into this block unless it's clear. 